Hi guys, it's Inam Kafour here with HTC One. You would have noticed in the applications draw here an icon which says kid mode. Sort of a blue square with a parent holding a child type of icon there. If you tap into it, and this talks to you essentially. What this is, is how many of you give your phone to your children to play games on because the child likes playing the games that you've got on your phone. Well, HTC with Zoodles have developed an application where you load up the application, then you pass it to your child. The child, if you've got more than one, taps on his own picture, like so, and then it whistles to the child as if it's a dog. Games. I think that's quite funny though, but hey-ho. Once the child goes in, he has got a list of applications are, are visible for him to play with. And if I scroll through, you can see I've got real racing there. I've got CS racing, some aeroplane games, Angry Birds, and some ones which have been suggested by Zoodle's uh, application developer here. And you can set what level or what applications appear within this uh, slider here. So if we pick one, so for example, uh, we won't go for the ones that we know about, Angry Birds and CS Race, and we know what those look like. But uh, SpongeBob, let's try when SpongeBob. you're done playing this game, tap the blue Z to play other games. And for me, I find that really annoying, but I'm presuming a child would love it. You get prompts as to what it needs to do. So we'll hit play. And I think in this game, you're meant to brush his teeth to stop them from falling out, maybe. Really, would a child love to play this game? Because I'm already bored of it. Who wants to brush teeth while playing a game, to be fair? Or am I not down with the kids these days? So let's see how this goes through. You get some nice music and some colour of Whoop. Obviously, I'm not good at brushing teeth now, am I? So, it tells you to hit the Z to go back. And you've got to be pretty stern with it to go in. There we go. Here to explore other activities. And you get that every time you go into the application or back to the game section. Because as you can see, we're in the game section. So, if we scroll through and, I don't know, you can also get cartoons and stuff. Uh, you can watch shows. So, here we go. If we watch when you're done playing this, this game, one, I've seen my son play this one. Z to play other games. So let that buffer in. So you can go ahead and watch cartoons from here as well. Tap here if we to go back, other activities. I think is this Sesame Street we've got here? I haven't seen this one. Let's go into this one. Hello, everybody. Look at yourself. Now back to me. Now back at yourself. Now back to me. Sadly, you are not a monster. But if you listen to Grover, you will know all about the word on just as this monster does. Look down. Back up. Yeah. Where am I? I am on a boat! Certainly, these don't seem like very good applications as an adult, but when you give your phone to a child and you watch them go through what they can actually view on here, they are amused for quite long periods of time. But whether or not you want your child to be playing these sorts of games on a smartphone so close to their face for long periods of time is a, another question. These are just the game section, but if we go through to the drawing section here... Art! Obviously... As Tap it says. here to create a new drawing. And you can draw. So we've got a paintbrush selected. We'll choose, I don't know, colour black maybe. I'm not very inventive. We'll do red. The kid can draw, mess around, and just scribble. My children tend to just scribble, to be fair. And you get the idea. And once you're done, if you go back, it then saves it. We've got a wide variety of books here that are read by various members of the Zoodles team and if we, uh, for example, go into the princess one here. Hi, my name is Debbie and I'm going to be reading to you the story of the princess and the pea. That didn't take very long to buffer in, did it? This is the story of the princess and the pea, but you may be surprised to learn that our story actually begins with the prince. You see, we'll just go back. We'll leave Debbie B there. As I say, a nice variety of books there help your child read 
as well as get into the books as well. It would have been interesting to have the story text on the screen as well so they could help them read, not just as a nighttime thing, no. Um, but my children tend to love these people read the books rather than myself. All you do is tap on their faces and you can record yourself reading the book. Video mail. Now, I haven't video. set my son up to use this, but essentially it allows the child to create uh, video messages so that you and your family can see them on the same device effectively. Just allows them to, as like a personal video recorder as such. And the final one along video. here is what they love, Tablet what they like playing. And you can see my kids like playing the Taz dancing game. Spongebob there, some word searches, I think that is there, as well as some, it teaches you sign language. Dance. One hand is the floor, and use two fingers to show legs dancing. Try it with me. Dance. Jump. One hand shows the ground. Use your two fingers to show legs jumping up and down. Jump. Your fingers are jumping. So it essentially teaches you sign language. But if you want to go into the, the settings to what your child can actually do, go right towards the end there. Zoodles. And then at the end, it says visit parent dashboard. So if I tap that. Tap the green arrow to play more games. And obviously it says draw a Z to visit the parent dashboard. This is kind of a security so that the child can't actually get to the parent section. And you can change Zoodles. this so that it doesn't draw a Z. You can set a pin or a password or anything like that. But Tap my children are quite young, so the Z, games. I've got it set to at the moment. And there we go. It takes you straight through to the settings section of the kid mode. And just to show you, you can go into the family section here and you can set up additional children quite easily. You can see I've got Daniel there. You just add a child, punch in the name, details and photographs, that sort of thing. And it adds them to the main menu there as well. So if we go back and then go to storybooks, it displays a list of the same story readings that we saw previously. But you can record your own reading from here as well so that when it appears on the child's side of the account, they can see your face as well from there. As I say, I prefer to leave the standard stock ones because for some reason my children don't like my face while reading the reading books. But hey ho, we'll go back. Again, go to the applications here so you can check out the settings. And you've got all the applications on the handset here. And you can put a tick next to them which ones you want them to use. You can see Angry Birds, I've got a blue tick next to CS Racing, Learning Games, My Paper Plane, Asphalt 7 is a no-no. Uh, obviously Messenger, Facebook is a no-no. And I haven't got Mini Moto on there, so we'll tap that so that they can play that. And I haven't got any of the applications that they can play, or even Dead Trigger, because the child is quite young. So that's how easily you can select the applications that appear on the children's side there. And if we just hit save at the bottom, that's how easily you can save it. So if you go through to Child Lock now, and this is a security setting side where you can tell it to either draw a Z or ask for a date of birth or a four-digit pin, that sort of thing from here. And if I change it to, say, for example, a four-digit pin, there you go, and just saying, if you forget it, you won't be able to get in. So we'll just put one, two, three, four. We're very secure for a child. I'm sure a child could even pick that up. We'll hit done. And over here, we've got the art where we can see what the child has actually created. The child doesn't have the ability to delete the images themselves, so the adult can. You can see I've got rid of that one, and I can get rid of that one if I so wish. If we go back now, under the main settings section where you've got the cog here, it gives you a raft of options of how often you want it to email you to say there's a new app available free to download. You can tell it how often you want it to refresh the content. You can also set it so that it doesn't receive any incoming calls when you've got it on. So if I take that tick out, if the child is playing, no calls will come in at all while the child is playing and you're in the kid mode. Once you come out of the kid mode, obviously it'll, the incoming calls will then start up again. But I do like that setting where you can stop it from receiving phone calls while the child is playing. Here's another filter that I love on this, violence filter, where you can set what violence level of games will be displayed. So if you can set it to zero, for example, where it says no violence, pretty much I'm sure it's going to be like Sesame Street type of games where there's no sort of violence at all in it whatsoever. And we've got number one, some aggressive actions like getting booed for the wrong answer. Is that an aggressive action these days? Number two, we have here explosions, blasts and lasers. And number four, cartoon simulated violence, matching clues or capture bandits. That's cartoon violence you can set it to. I had it set to three, but obviously the child has been supervised while they're playing games, so I can always keep an eye on them from there. 
I do like that violence filter though because some games are suggested by Zoodle so you don't always know what they're going to suggest. It's good to set a filter or a level of what type of violence you want your child to see. Here's another great feature that I love, block characters because children can take a liking to or a disliking to certain characters for whatever reason and say for example my son gets nightmares about, I don't know, um, Barbie maybe. I can set it so that it doesn't display any Barbie content on the screen whatsoever when he's in the Zoodles application. Attention to detail, small things like that make this application very valuable indeed. And say for example, if another child is playing and they don't like, I don't know, uh, your Gabba Gabba, because it looks kind of weird. You can just set it, hit save, and Bob's your uncle, it's not going to display any of those characters while they're playing uh, the Zoodles or in the Zoodles application. As parents, we don't want children to be playing games all day, every day, so time limits is also a brilliant feature as well, where you can set what time limits the child spends on uh, the application. So for example, Monday to Friday and weekends. If you go into Monday to Friday, it's currently set to unlimited, but you can set it to 30 minutes per child. So that once a child logs into the game, it gives them 30, I say the game, logs into the application, it gives them 30 minutes between Monday and Friday each day to play the application or play games within that application and then it stops functioning after that point. And then if you've got more than one child, that child can log out, pass the phone to another child and they can click on their own name and start the time limit for themselves. A great way to limit what type of time the child spends or each child spends playing the kid mode or applications within the kid mode. Let's go back to the main features here. This is the final thing that I want to show you is promote subjects. Now we know the games and the, the applications that Zoodles push out to this kid mode are automatic but you can limit or say what you want to prefer to be displayed within the application. So for example say if your child isn't doing well at maths and you want to push more mathematical games and applications to the application all you do you select that to maximum and say for example you're not really bothered about creative development you can limit artistic type of uh, games down to zero and say a science person you could put it up life skills you could increase as well save them so most of the information that's supplied within the applications in kid mode will be tailored towards your preferences or what you want your child to see we'll just go to the top and come out to the setting section of Zoodles application in kid mode here. I think this is a brilliant application that HTC and Zoodles have brought out to the HTC One here because I certainly do it when the children want to play with the phone you just hand them the phone without any policing on it you just supervise them but this is a great way to hand them the phone and not constantly keep an eye on what they're doing knowing that they're not randomly looking through your text messages or randomly going to internet sites or looking at weird YouTube videos. It's a great way to kind of police what they do on your device and once they're in, even if they try and get out via the X here and if they don't know the pin, they'll Zoodles. type in random characters and it'll just throw them back to the um, menu here and I accidentally tipped straight in there. But even if they get the password a number of times wrong, it doesn't lock them out. But there is a, a security Zoodles. flaw with this because, say for example, they try and go into the parent dashboard, that also Zoodles. locks them out if they type in the pin. But... They can simply do this. Zoodles. If you switch off the device and then switch it straight back on again, it bypasses the security that Zoodles have put on that kid mode. So we'll just wait for it to boot back up again. And boom, you're in the device outside of kid mode and you're not being policed. HTC has bought a feature-rich application in kid mode to this handset, but they need to sort out the security because children are very intuitive and can learn things very, very quickly, and a child will easily and quickly figure out to get out of kid mode, you just switch the device on or off. I do love some of the key features, but you will still need to keep an eye on your child so that it doesn't switch off and back on the handset and get to the rest of the phone. Let me know in the comments section down below whether or not you'd actually use this kid mode when handing your device to children or whether or not it's just a fancy gimmick that HTC have pushed out to the one in order to push the features because this device is certainly lacking some features in comparison to for example, the Galaxy S4. As well as any other comments or questions you guys have got, hit them up in the comments section down below there. Give us a thumbs up if you like this video and you like what you saw. If you haven't already done so, hit subscribe. It's also down there as well. It doesn't cost you a penny. And you can also check out some of our forthcoming videos. Thanks for watching. Have an awesome day. And we'll see you next time.